This presentation will cover thesis statements, what they are, and how to use them in your essays. And this presentation is a companion piece to the topic sentences presentation. You should watch this presentation on thesis statements first and then move forward to the topic sentences uh, presentation because you need to know what a thesis statement is before you can understand how they relate to or how topic sentences relate to the thesis statements. So moving forward, we need to talk about thesis statements. They're very important. You can't have a successful essay if you don't have a thesis statement in your essay. So the purpose of the thesis statement, uh, the thesis is a statement and it's usually one sentence and papers of the size that you write in a college class, uh, in, in a first year composition class especially, the thesis should only be one sentence long. If it's more than that, it's too much. So the thesis is a one sentence statement that clearly expresses the controlling idea or the main purpose of your essay. Uh, when someone asks you, hey, what is your paper on? What's the topic of your paper? You should be able to read your thesis statement to them or recite your thesis statement to that person, and the person will understand what your paper is about. They'll, he or she will know the entirety of the essay from understanding, listening to that statement. Your audience should be able to read the thesis and know exactly what your essay will discuss. And it should only be what it discusses. Now, it's important, again, that this thesis statement appears in the introduction of your essay. A lot of times I'll read students' papers and it's almost like they're writing a murder mystery or a mystery episode from television where you give all the details, the students present all the information, and then in the concluding paragraph they finally explain what everything has been about. So this should all prove to you whatever, you know, X, Y, or Z. That information needs to be in the thesis, up at the introduction. Uh, if it's not, then your writer, your I mean, your your audience has no clue what's happening in your paper. They don't understand why they're reading the essay. So be sure that they understand by telling them clearly in your thesis what the purpose of your essay is, and place that information in the introductory paragraph. You know, in shorter essays, there'll be it'll be the last sentence of the introductory paragraph, not the first, not the middle. It needs to be the final sentence of the introduction. The introduction explains the situation that brings us to the point of why we need the thesis, and then the thesis explains the argument that the rest of the essay will cover. For argumentative essays, and that's what we're going to write in the class, the thesis has to do more than be a statement of fact. It must establish a position, opinion, or an idea that's supported by evidence provided in the body paragraphs. Now, typically there are two types of papers. There's one that's a, an informative essay, where you're just writing to provide information on a topic or a subject or an, a situation, an event. Um, and that's what I sort of call a book report style essay. Here I've read the book, now I'm going to write an essay that tells you what the book was about. There's nothing there that's argumentative, you're just explaining what you already know. You're just reporting details. Uh, the, the essays we'll write in this class the essays that you'll most often be required to write about in college will be more argumentative in nature, and that's where you'll need to take a position. You'll have to have an opinion that you're putting forth. The thesis becomes that position or opinion or the idea, and then later in the essay, in the body paragraphs, you will have to defend and explain and support that position that was taken in the thesis statement. So it needs to go beyond just a statement of fact. And I want to give you some examples so that you can understand the differences. So thesis has to do more than the state of fact. A bad thesis statement would be this one. Georgia is a state in the United States. <clears throat> it's a statement of fact. There's nothing that needs to be proven, defended, or supported. Everyone has accepted throughout the world that Georgia is a state in the United States. There's no question about that. It's not a debatable topic. So it's not a strong thesis statement for an argumentative essay because it's not doing anything argumentative. It's not doing anything to establish a position. If I wanted to strengthen my uh, thesis, have a stronger thesis or strengthen that statement, I might say Georgia is the best state in the country. That makes it debatable. Because someone else might think, well, I think Nevada is the best state in the country, or I think California is the best state in the country. So this actually takes a position, and it's going beyond a statement of fact, because it's not a proven fact that Georgia is the best state. It's an opinion or a belief, and what we're going to do is provide evidence to support that in our essay. So that's where we're having a stronger thesis that has an argumentative edge to it. It goes beyond statements of fact. 
Always read your 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 top what you intend your thesis statement to be. And if you're only stating a fact, it's not a thesis statement. You have to figure out a, a different path. You have to decide on a different approach. Um, the thesis statement it must clearly explain the purpose of the essay. A bad thesis statement. Some people believe MARTA should expand, while others believe it should not. Now, if we were writing a book report style essay, or we're just reporting then that may work. But in this situation, no position has been taken. You're just saying there are two positions that exist. The essay itself would need to take a position. Uh, so th that's not happening here. It's only suggesting that the different positions are happening, but it's not saying in this essay position X will be taken. Another example of a bad thesis is the question. Would Atlanta benefit from a MARTA expansion? When you ask a question, you're not making a choice on your own. You're not establishing an opinion or a position that's your own. What you're doing is you're asking your audience to answer that question for you. And to do that weakens your argument, weakens your paper, because you're giving your authority, any power that you have, over to your audience. And what if your audience were to disagree with you? What if your whole purpose of your essay was to say that MARTA shouldn't be expanded into Atlanta, and you say, would MARTA benefit from, or would Atlanta benefit from a MARTA expansion, hoping that the answer will be no, and your audience overwhelmingly says yes, or they automatically disagree with you? Then you're, you're, you have a problem. So you need to clearly establish the position you want to take in the, in the thesis statement so that your essay is clear and the purpose of the essay is clear. So if we have a strong thesis statement, it would say, MARTA should expand throughout Atlanta. That clearly establishes establishes a position, it creates something that can be debated or argued, something that needs to be proven. You'll see oftentimes in thesis statements that are effective that the terms should or should not are in integrated into the sentence because that assures or ensures that you are establishing a position. You know, if I say something should happen or something should not happen, that's taking a position that has to be defended. So if you're ever in doubt and you're not sure if you're developing a strong enough thesis statement, think about can I include, can I write a sentence or statement that includes a should statement or a should not statement? And that could be my thesis. It won't always work, but oftentimes you'll see that it can be the solution to establishing the type of thesis statement you want. One that actually positions your essay and makes it something more than a statement of fact. The thesis statement also needs to be an original statement from the writer. Uh, you never want to use another source, a quote, or a paraphrase from somewhere else to create your thesis statement. And I think this gets people in trouble because everyone wants to use evidence and source material to support what they're saying, but you have to know where to place that. And we'll talk about that later in the semester and other presentations of, of the appropriate placement of source material. But it absolutely should not appear in your, top, in your thesis statement. Your thesis statement has to be your words. Um, because if you don't have that, it's taking away from the originality of your essay and the ideas that you're putting forth because your essay is kind of like your thesis statement. It needs to offer something, a new idea, or say something in a different way than what's been said before. And if you're quoting and paraphrasing source material, then you're just suggesting that the source has the ideas for your entire essay. And my question and your reader's question, your, your audience's question, will automatically be, well, if all you're doing is just mimicking, copying the ideas and restating the ideas and positions of this other source, why don't I just read that other source because they had the idea? You know, you want the source material to support what you have to say, not be what you have to say. So in order to do that, you need your own original statement. A bad thesis example is you see this quotation, to stay healthy, Americans must convert to a diet consisting of high fiber and less sugar, and you accredit that, or the source is accredited to Jones, page 244. This means that nothing in that sentence belongs to the original writer. It's all been taken out and placed in as the uh, thesis statement for you know, a different paper. It doesn't work because it's a quote. It's someone else's idea. I would say, well, just let me read Jones's essay if that's all that we're working from is his argument or her argument. A stronger thesis 
or a strong thesis would, would be a sentence from you that might say, although a high fiber diet is effective in maintaining health, Americans might also consider adding complex carbohydrates to their meals. And this introduces new information. This is an idea completely from you. You may have a lot of sources that offer this same idea, and you're going to explain that later in your paper. But for this thesis statement to work, it needs to be something from you, something that you have created and generated on your own. There shouldn't be quotation marks or paraphrases in your thesis statement. So let's look at the checklist for a strong thesis statement. The thesis must do more than offer a statement of fact. It must take a clear position that can be supported, defended, or proven with evidence. There should never be a question in your thesis statement. The thesis statement should also never be a quote from another source. It has to be your original ideas. The thesis should be an original statement from the writer. The thesis should explain the, the controlling idea of the essay. Again, you should be able to say what that sentence is and your audience will know exactly what the entirety of your essay will be about. And also the thesis should appear at the end of the introduction. That's the first paragraph of the essay. <coughs> Excuse me. There are two types of thesis statements that you may want to consider writing. And I think you're probably more familiar with one, the closed thesis, than you would be the other that I'm going to talk about, the open thesis. The closed thesis is a thesis that you probably wrote about, you probably used it in high school, because it takes a position and includes the exact reasons for that position within the sentence. These, uh, it can also maybe call the three-prong thesis statement if you're used to writing a five-paragraph essay. The reasons will then become the topics for each of your body paragraphs. An example of this, uh, Wonder Woman is a terrific movie because it features lots of action, intense drama, and has a solid cast of actors. So here's the purpose of the essays built into that thesis, that Wonder Woman is a terrific movie. The first reasons given is that it has lots of action, and that becomes the subject matter of the first body paragraph. It has intense drama, and that becomes the subject matter of the second paragraph. It has a solid cast of actors. That becomes the subject matter of the third paragraph. So you've built all that information into that one statement. That's a closed thesis statement. That means the only thing you're going to discuss will be within the confines of those three items you've listed. You can't talk about anything outside of that. Another example, Hawaii is the best place to vacation in America because of its beaches, amazing food, and tropical locales. The purpose is built into that statement. The main idea, Hawaii is the best place to vacation in America. The first reason you list is because of beaches. So the one paragraph will be about beaches. <clears throat> Amazing food will become the next paragraph. Tropical locales will be the third. Um, notice that a closed thesis statement will often include the word because in it so that the reason to support the position can be stated in the thesis after you've explained the position. Here's the situation, and it's this way because of these two, three, four items. And those two, three, four items then become what you discuss in your, in your essay. It's called a closed thesis format because this is the type of uh, thesis that limits what can be discussed in the body of the essay. Only the reasons that are mentioned in the closed thesis can be discussed. For example, the Hawaii essay cannot have a separate paragraph explaining how fun the Hawaiian luau's are because that's not something that you've referenced or addressed in those three items in your sentence. So if you have a paragraph that talks about Hawaiian luau's, then your essay, your thesis statement has been misleading and it's going to deduct points, it's going to create confusion in your paper because you're introducing something that was not discussed in your thesis. Think of your thesis as like your contract with your audience. This is my contract telling you exactly what I will be talking about in this essay. I won't discuss anything else, but I will discuss everything that I've said that I've taught I will talk about in this sentence. The open thesis is a little bit different because it gives a writer a little bit more freedom to talk about uh, information after taking the position that the, that the thesis will take. Um, the open thesis does not include the reasons that will be covered in the essay. And that one would be the difference. We would just say Wonder Woman is a terrific film. Or we would say Hawaii is the best place to vacation in America. So you see here, all we're listing is our purpose, and we're not including that because component uh, that will convey ideas or offer other reasons that will be covered in our thesis in, in our body paragraphs. Both statements are still clearly taking a position. They still fulfill the rules of a strong thesis statement. 
but they don't list the exact reasons. And that leaves your audience to read the essay to find out those specific reasons. That they're not laid out clearly in, that, in the thesis statement. But this also means that the thesis isn't limited to what will be covered. I can go beyond the things that I would have talked about in a closed thesis if I need to. The open thesis is always useful, but it's especially effective if you realize you're going to have more than two or three very specific reasons to cover. Uh, no one wants to read a list of five or six things or five or six reasons in a thesis statement that should be succinct and clear. The thesis needs to be as, as quick and to the point as possible so that your audience can understand and carry that idea with them as they move through your topics, uh, through your paragraphs. So if I were going to talk about Wonder Woman is a terrific film and I had ten different reasons, you wouldn't want to list all ten of those. And I probably don't even need to have ten separate paragraphs about it. I can probably blend them all together in, in, in separate paragraphs throughout the paper, but I can do that in a different way uh, if I have an open-ended thesis as opposed to a closed thesis, which lists, would have to list all the items that would be covered. So think about that as you write. The open thesis statement may be more freeing. As long as the thesis statement clearly offers a position, it takes a position, and it goes beyond statement of fact, then it could work. So I want you to look at this list of, of sentences and figure out to yourself which which of these are good, uh, effective thesis statements and which are weak, okay? And we'll look at the answers after this. Uh, first one, The Witching Hour was written by Anne Rice in 1990. The second thesis statement, New Orleans is a great city for tourists to visit. The third sentence, I do not enjoy horror stories because they frighten me and I cannot sleep after reading them. The next thesis option, horror stories are scary. The next, the TV series Game of Thrones is better than the books upon which the show is based. The next, uh, Game of Thrones features several British actors. And the next one, dragons are better pets than wolves because they breathe fire, they protect their loved ones, and their owners can fly on them. So look back over those for a moment and decide which of those statements would be the strongest possible thesis statements for essays based on the information that we've covered. So here are our answers. Uh, the first sentence is a weak thesis statement. The Witching Hour was written by Anne Rice in 1990. I've crossed through the ones that are the weakest. This is weak because it's just a statement of fact. It happened. New Orleans is a great city for tourists to visit is a strong or effective thesis statement because it actually offers a position that can be defended or supported. I do not enjoy horror stories because they frighten me and I cannot sleep after reading them. Now this may be a statement of fact to you, but as you explain it to your audience, it becomes more argumentative or more something that you're proving that because of the, the horror stories, that's the reason why you're being frightened and why you're having trouble sleeping which is much different than the statement, horror stories are scary, which is just a generally accepted statement of fact. The TV series Game of Thrones is better than the books upon which the show is based. That, again, is a, a, an opinion or a viewpoint that has to be supported or defended. Game of Thrones features several British actors. That's, again, a statement of fact. Those actors are just there. Uh, dragons are better pets than wolves because they breathe fire, they protect their loved ones, and their owners can fly on them. That, again, is another example of uh, a strong thesis statement because it offers an opinion or a viewpoint. So I ho hope this helps you understand uh, writing effective topic sentences or effective thesis statements. And now move forward, now that you understand thesis statements, you want to take the quiz on thesis statements and complete that. And once you've been successful with that, move on to the topic sentences uh, portion of the presentation. Thank you.